right, so we're going to be talking about alcohol and drugs. Let's get into it. So first, let's look at the drug classification. Um, there's three major types of drugs. There's stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens. Stimulants speed up the body's function. Depressants slow down the body's function. And hallucinogens alter perception of reality. So stimulants, they speed up the body's functions and the central nervous system. You may, some symptoms um, or effects may have increased heart rate, elevated blood pressure. You may feel more alert. You may even cause some seizures, headaches, uh, nausea and aggression, um, and some anxiety or panic. Um, and some example of these stimulant drugs are amphetamines, um, caffeine, cocaine, ecstasy, and nicotine are all stimulants. So they speed up the body's function. Depressants are slowing down the body's function. So you may feel fatigued or relaxed or lethargic. Um, you may act out of character. Um, same for stimulants and hallucinogens. Um, they all cause acting out of character or doing things you might not do normally. Um, you may fall unconscious. Um, you may start vomiting. And it even can cause some death. Okay. Some examples of depressants are alcohol. Uh, cannabis, heroin, opioids, uh, sedatives, those are all depressants. Lastly, there's hallucinogens, which um, alter a person's perception of reality. So you may um, see or hear or feel um, and experience things that are not really there or uh, are distorted from reality. So effects can include the mood changes, so different changes in mood. You may feel super uh, euphoric, or you may feel um, panicked or just super angry, all of these different mood changes. Um, it elevates your blood pressure. You may feel aggression or paranoia. Um, you may act out of character. Um, you may have a irrational behavior or bizarre behavior. Um, and you may feel anxiety or depression. And some examples are ecstasy, LSD, and mushrooms. So the reward pathway is a, um, a pathway that reinforces behavior. So um, it aids survival and it creates a happy response for beneficial behaviors. behaviors. And um, when we were back in the caveman days, um, it aids survival. So whenever we do something good, um, this pathway responds and it um, creates a happy response for beneficial behaviors such as like food that's good or um, they're all different things that help with survival and then it's also associated with memory so you'll remember this um, good behavior and remember this good feeling and want to do it again so it begins at the ventral tegmental area which is that little bead kind of looking thing right there um, so there, these neurons release dopamine, which gives you pleasure. And then dopamine's release in the nucleus accumbens and the prefrontal vortex, which are associated with memory. So you, you feel that good um, pleasure and then you want and remember that good pleasure and want to do it again. Okay. So in terms of alcohol and drugs, um, alcohol and drugs make... Um, release dopamine and that causes the reward pathway to um, trigger I guess okay so let's talk addiction addiction and dependency so that's when the body a dependence is when the body adjusts and adapts to the constant access and uses of a drug so your body is adjusting to the constant use of a specific drug and your body is like I need to have this um, and it needs the drug present to just maintain homeostasis and stasis. So all of these dopamine levels, um, they're kind of kind of kind of uh, combating that. And that's when um, if you stop taking that drug or that substance, withdrawal starts occurring. So you may feel symptoms um, relating to withdrawal, which we'll talk about. Then 
uh, the difference between dependence and addiction, um, it's mostly defined by behavior. That's a consistent and compulsive use of a substance with tolerance and um, psychological symptoms upon withdrawal. So you may start having like vomiting, um, you may um, have tremors, um, just symptoms upon withdrawal, um, and you're consistently and compulsing, compulsively using this substance, um, even despite some negative um, consequences from it. So let's talk tolerance. So there's a higher doses of the drug that's needed to create the same effect. That's what tolerance is. Um, so these addictive drugs activate the reward pathway, remember, um, releases dopamine, and it causes the cell to increase the amount of dopamine in its area, creating that high. So that's how the reward system plays a role in these drugs. Then when you're taking these uh, drugs, the brain compensates for the sudden changes and reduces the numbers of cells that respond to dopamine. So the next time the drug is used, the effect is not as strong uh, because it's limiting those cells that are responding to the dopamine levels. Okay? So the cells are less cells are responding, meaning that uh, the effect is not as strong. Therefore, you may feel like you need to have more of that, that uh, certain substance to um, create the same high. Then there's withdrawal. So when you um, have this addiction or um, tolerance, uh, you may want to stop um, using. And then um, it causes some physical and mental symptoms from stopping or reducing that drug. Um, so abruptly stopping the use of that drug will cause, um, it'll cause the effects the reward system has to stop. So the dopamine is not as uh, present as it was. So the brain becomes more reactive to stress. Um, so it may cause some headaches, um, confusion, um, depression, uh, fatigue, all of these things that you see on the screen um, are some symptoms of withdrawal okay so what happens during withdrawal um, the effects on the reward system cease or stop and then dopamine's not released as much as it was your brain's like hey what's happening um, and then it becomes more reactive to stress because of the lack of dopamine okay so how do we stop this addiction and um, dependence on certain drugs. Um, so there's two different types of um, prevention or um, treatments. There's abstinence, abstinence, and there's harm reduction. So abstinence, uh, that's the more traditional and common form of treatments. Um, it's completely abstaining from drugs and alcohol, so you're no longer using that substance. And then there's harm reduction, um, which mainly aims to reduce the harmful consequences. So they're not really abstaining from the drugs. They're just trying to reduce the harm, harm, harmful consequences of um, the drug. Um, so that may be beneficial to users who may be in denial of um, their addiction, or they may be against quitting, or may struggle to identify what their addiction is. Um, so it may be better for people who are more um, weary of abstinence. Um, and some examples of harm reduction are um, education and prevention. So you may um, educate people from these consequences. You may educate on how to do um, this safely, how to do a drug safely. You may uh, try to prevent uh, these certain things from happening from through this education. Um, access to naloxone, which is a drug that um, prevents overdoses, specifically from opi opioids. Um, you may have supervised injection sites to make sure that people are not overdosing or um, using clean needles. Um, and also, peer supports help with harm reduction. And some examples of harm reduction in other areas would be um, like sunscreen, so you go outside 
Um, you know you may get sunburn, but um, to protect yourself from harm, you may use sunscreen, um, seat belts, so you know you're um, driving to be more safe, you're gonna use a seat belt or a speed limit. Other ones are birth control and cigarette filters. All are examples of harm reduction in different areas besides drugs and alcohol. So you could just get a different sense of harm reduction. Okay. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new.